Assalamu alaikum. How are you guys doing? Are you well? It's lucky to be here. Brother, you're looking very defensive over there. Very defensive. Just sitting there. Are you cold? Are you, are you paranoid about nipple theft? <laughs> Gotta be very careful, Riyad. Gotta be very careful. I read this article where people were stealing nipples. Selling them on the black market. You're quite different, sir, because you're sitting there. I can see your priorities are in order over there. <laughs> no, it's nice to be here, eh? Uh, I, I'm, I'm so happy to be doing stand-up again, because I've been doing movies recently. Did anybody see my movie material? Okay, a few of you. <laughs> now, the strange thing about material is that the word of mouth for material worked very well throughout South Africa, except in Cape Town. I don't know what happened in Cape Town, you know? Even in Johannesburg, people are like, Cheryl, you have to see my Cheryl, hi. You have to see it. I'd made Barry wrong a cry. I don't know how they did that. He's such a manly man. I have no idea. <laughs> Even in Pretoria, pit, pit, you must material gaan kijk. <laughs> I, I, I thought it were very nice. <laughs> That's a snacks a culinary flick, young <laughs> Very funny curry muncher. <laughs> Even in Durban, hey man, you have to watch material. You have to watch it. Have to watch it. I got a copy here uh, if you want to buy it. <laughs> it's a good copy. But I don't know what happened in Cape Town. Word of mouth for material brilliant throughout South Africa. I don't know what happened in Cape Town. You know, so many people in Cape Town I met, you know where they at? I did, I did watch your film, eh? <laughs> And, and you touch a person over here, man. You touch a person. Because it's emotional, man, emotional. You know, Riyad, I tell everyone I know, they must go watch your film fabric. Everyone I know. <laughs> you know, fabric was beautiful, man, so nice. But you know, I didn't expect people to make mistakes with my movie material. Didn't expect it. You know, I expected that, you know, when I was a medical doctor. You know, because doctors tend to use confusing jargon with patients. Yes, Mr. Abrams, you have what we call angina, which is a thoracic type chest pain caused by ischemia to the cardiac musculature. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, doctor, yes. I understand, yes. Fatima, the doctor say I get a vagina hat. <laughs> I say, what did the frown mean? No wonder I always get emotional. You know? <laughs> or if people have pneumonia in Cape Town, people go, I got ammonia. I got ammonia. I got double ammonia. Double. Ammonia times two. <laughs> uh, how, do you, how do you get ammonia handy handy? So you wake me the handy handy. Then come it up, then get it up, then create a double ammonia. So I, uh, very difficult to breathe. <sighs> <sighs> the Indians are different. Eh? Indians complain about varicose veins. But they don't say varicose veins. The Indian's like, yeah, the doctor's here, my veins, very angry. <laughs> he say I've got very cross veins, very cross. <laughs> Just pray for me, make dua for me, please. <laughs> but I'm feeling old now, people, man. That's my problem, man. I'm feeling old. So I'm feeling unfit. You know, so a friend of mine, he advises me, hey, Riyad, bro, hey, Riyad. Why don't you try speed walking, bro? It's great on the knees, it's a great form of exercise. And I'm like, how about no? Have you guys seen speed walking? That's like the stupidest looking exercise. <laughs> and I, I don't know stereotype, but maybe the white folks that do that. Come on, let's, come on, let's, come on. We are light to fire someone. Let's go. 
you know my, why it's mainly white folks, right? Because you got to have good self-esteem to do stuff like that in public. <laughs> People of color, we don't have the self-esteem to do that in public. We don't feel that good about ourselves, right? <laughs> we see black folks walking in the street, right? Usually they're walking at a normal pace. Unless they're crossing the street and for some reason, they walk really, really slowly. Have you noticed that? <laughs> You'll be waiting to drive. Beep, beep. And then you got people from the Cape Flats who are mixed race, mixed race. So you get influenced by both sides. Like one half of you wants to go fast, <laughs> the other half wants to go slow, so you end up doing this. That's how it is, hey. That's ridiculous, eh? Ridiculous. <laughs> How you walk is not genetically determined, you know, because I'm like, I'm Capetonian of partially Indian descent, right? That means I should be walking. <laughs> Feel like a gangster and a shopkeeper at the same time. <laughs> give me my money, give me my money. <laughs> I think when I walk in that trip, I'm it's the worst eh? thing. The worst thing is the people who walk, they trip, they pretend nothing happened. <laughs> what? Nothing? What? What? <laughs> it's cool when you see people do embarrassing stuff and then they pretend it didn't happen. Like, like in Tarawi, right? Sometimes, you know, because like the people like, oh, <laughs> They fought during Tarawi. <laughs> could be worse, you could be in Ruku, like... <laughs> <laughs> and the guys behind you's mouth is open. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have lagun for iftar, right? <laughs> I'm very much into positive medical initiatives, like Movember, it's coming up. It's an initiative to raise awareness for testicular cancer, right? And basically, during the month of November, you grow a moustache, right? That's why it's moustache plus November equals algebraically <laughs> Movember. But everyone was getting involved in Movember, like your English men getting involved in it, Afrikaans men getting involved in it, Indian women getting involved in it. <laughs> They didn't know they were involved. They were just like, what's this Movember thing? I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> but the thing I don't understand is that when they had breast cancer awareness, what did they have? National Cleavage Day, right? Because they had that. But for testicular cancer, they had to grow the moustache because they couldn't like, you know. Because <laughs> people don't react as positively to the apparatus as they do to the cleavage. Because some women, some women utilize their cleavage for positive gains. Like if a cop stops them, eh, do you know how fast you were going, ma'am? Officer, can you please just let me off just this once, please? <laughs> okay, you can go. <laughs> Men, we can't really do that. Officer, please just let me off just once. <laughs> Please let me go, my brother, please. Because people, like, since I've been doing movies, right, it's been strange because people are starting to recognize me a little bit more, right? And I feel like I'm a normal dude, right? So it's weird, and people in the malls. <laughs> that Riyad Mirza, he looks so much shorter in real life, huh? I think he saw me, I think he saw me. Okay, I'm talking to him, okay? Okay, be cool, be cool, be cool. I'm gonna talk to him. Okay, relax. (laughs) 
Harriet, can I have your autograph, please? But I don't have a page. Um, can you sign here? And just write my name, David. <laughs> and write something funny, write something funny. I'm like, uh, to David? I think this is haram. I, I, I don't know. It's definitely in Durban. Durban people just walk past you like they're in on a secret. They're like... <laughs> you, him, aren't you? <laughs> you Rishad Mula, right? You Rishad. <laughs> I just want to say I love how you present Eastern Mosaic. <laughs> Even sometimes the uncles come up to you. You know, uncles, elderly gentlemen. The mark of an uncle is basically how high the belt. Like the older the uncles, like the rings of the tree, can determine the age of the uncle, the higher the belt goes. Right? It goes up high. Eventually, bro, you won't need to do this. You, the belt will... I'm fine now. It's okay. My nipples are perfect. <laughs> the, the uncles do this, they do this thing. And then they walk out, they walk out you know how they go. Yeah. Stay straight in your face. Then they ask you a question you can't answer. Hey! <laughs> do I know you? <laughs> Think about that for a moment. Do I know you? This uncle won't even take responsibility for his own memory. <laughs> I must recall what is in his mind. Do I know you? Uh, maybe you know me from the movies. Or do you go watch movies by Eastgate also? <laughs> the uncles like to tell you jokes also. Do you like to tell jokes, uncle? Does he like to tell jokes? You know, the uncles come up with, the, and usually the most, the more, like, mashallah, or pious the uncle looks, the ruder the joke. <laughs> Riyad, let me hit you with this one, right? Let me hit you with this one, okay? Right, let me hit you with this one. Okay, what do you call a Muslim guy, a slamo, with uh, diarrhea? I don't know, empty ass. <laughs> Then they always explain it, you see, because empty, empty ass is the name, but it sounds like empty ass is ass. <laughs> Can use it, use it in your comedies. Use it. Okay, let me do another one. What do you call a Muslim that works in a crematorium? He brime. Because <laughs> you see, he brime. Ah, what you know from funny? You know nothing from funny. Love the uncles. The uncles are the best, you know. Sometimes the uncles like to pose for pictures also with you, you know. But different to the young people. Young people like to pose like, you know. <laughs> but the uncles all the same. Just like. <laughs> Come take a photo, quick. Don't you want to smile, uncle? Okay, okay, I'll smile, I'll smile. Then they always give the auntie the cell phone camera. And she's the least qualified to use the cell phone camera. She never knows what she's just taking photographs of her own face over there. Just... <laughs> Sometimes she do drops the camera too quickly, so and after, but then takes photograph of her foot. <laughs> Look just like my bunion. I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> Okay, right, let me just zoom in quickly. Okay, let me zoom in. <laughs> let me zoom out. <laughs> Who didn't see material, by the way? 
Just put up your hand. Ma'am, in the front row, you didn't see material. Get out, get out now. <laughs> now it's okay. What's your name, ma'am? Lizzie, Lizzie. It's okay if you didn't see material, Lizzie. It's okay. You know, because we took our movie material to the London BFI Film Festival. <laughs> Lizzie. <laughs> and at the London BFI Film Festival, the royal doctor came to see our film. Kasam Wallahi, I swear to you, the royal doctor, the queen's doctor came to see our film. Was the right over with me, Lizzie? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what to say to the royal doctor, honestly. I mean, what do you say to the royal doctor? Um, uh, does the queen have piles? <laughs> Prince Charles looks like a horse, is he hung like one? I, I didn't know what to say. And like, I'm supposed to like have an entourage because I'm supposed to be like famous now. So you're supposed to have an entourage. Sorry, Ria can't speak to you now. He's indisposed. Ria, do you need anything? A foot rub, do you need anything? You're the man, Ria. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not like that, you know, because I got a Muslim entourage. You know? My mother, my father, my wife, <laughs> my kids, you know. I'm the celebrity, but I must do things for them. <laughs> The queen, queen's doctor standing on right over there, threw something in my side, like, ah. <laughs> ah. Daddy, I want to pee. <laughs> the queen's doctor is like, now, now, young man, it's more polite to say we. Now, kids don't understand things like you understand it. My son's like, ah. ah, ah. Daddy. We want to pee. <laughs> so we went to pee. <laughs> but the Queen's doctor, he loved the film. Lizzie, loved the film. He came out there, he was like, absolutely love the film. Love the film. Per chance, do you have a copy of the movie? I would love to give it to the Queen. Like, uh, uh, we gave him a copy, right? I don't know if he gave it to the Queen, but Kasam Wallahi, we gave him a copy. And he's like, who knows? If she enjoys your art, she may even knight you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, now, calm, calm down, Queen's Doctor, calm down. I cannot be a knight, okay? Can you imagine that? Like, I ordain you the order of knighthood. Arise, Sir Musa. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Sir Musa is not the name of a knight. Okay? <laughs> Sir Lancelot, that sounds like a knight, you know? May I present to you Sir Lancelot? Oh, is he going to help us slay the dragon? You know, that sounds like a knight, you know? May I present to you Sir Musa? Mansa chicken, mansa chicken. <laughs> Do I get dumped with my Sir Musa? Imagine being like nobility and food at the same time. I am Sir Musa. I swear allegiance to King Pai. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Part of the Knights of a Triangular Table. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but I enjoyed the UK. I did enjoy the UK, bruh. Love the UK. Anybody from the UK? Usually we have a cup. Oh, oh, very nice. Like she was, and that was very quick. You know, it wasn't like took a time. I just mentioned like, did you actually like? Are you from the UK or did you sit on something sharp? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not actually from the UK. No, no, no. <laughs> are you from the UK, ma'am? Yes. And where in the UK are you from? Sorry. From Manchester, you, were you born in Manchester? Oh, okay, and how did you find yourself <laughs> on your way to the show? I'm very curious, ma'am. Oh, you need subtitles, the accent. <laughs> how did you find yourself? Uh, why did you decide to come to my show? <laughs> I 
It's like you are, you, it's interesting, you're from the UK and you're answering like you're in the UK. <laughs> like there's some sort of satellite delay. <laughs> are you on holiday, on your vacation? Oh, you live here now? Okay, you live, like where, like here, in the theater? <laughs> A phantom of the theater. <laughs> But ma'am, I want to tell you, I love the UK, right? I really appreciated my time there, you know? Um, amazing thing for me was, going there is that, fi finding out is that the British police, right? They don't carry guns, right? It was weird for me. I mean, coming from South Africa, I couldn't understand this because we had the shoot to kill policy, right? With Becky Taylor at that one point. It's like, shoot first, ask questions later, like, where were you on the 19 question? <laughs> Do you have an alibi? Why aren't you answering me? It's not answering me. <laughs> but they, in the UK, they need a gun. They actually phone a special gun unit to bring them a gun. I, mean, I can't imagine a South African actually having to phone for a gun. Could you imagine a South African cop? Hey, hey, if you don't, if you don't, just, just wait. I, I, use, I use this. I used to say, star 140 star, please call. <laughs> and he phones back, but, <laughs> but our police are getting hectic, eh? Hectic service delivery protests. They are hardcore, right? People protesting, like in Fixburg, the non delivery of running water. Protesting, we don't have running water. What did the police do? They disperse the crowd. With water cannons. <laughs> it's a little insensitive, eh? <laughs> you don't have water? Text. <laughs> people don't have water, don't squirt them out of the way with water. The people of Fixburg mustn't protest sewerage problems, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> dry cleaning after that much <laughs> but I enjoy staying in different countries I do enjoy it but hotels are the same all over the world all over the world right Lizzie <laughs> hotels are the same you know have you noticed Lizzie every hotel they make the sheets so tight <laughs> in the hotel room beds have you noticed that you don't know like every hotel they make the sheets unnecessarily tight you get into the bed you feel like a credit card in a wallet <laughs> And I feel sorry for the non-Muslims that have to stay in hotel rooms after the Muslim people. Because you guys don't know what we use those little glasses in the bathroom for, eh? <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about, Lizzie? You don't know. Cheryl, what's the glass doing next to the toilet? I don't understand. Must be children playing around or something. <laughs> Lizzie, you don't know what's going on, eh? <laughs> Let me explain it to you, you know, because this show is educational as well. Right, basically what happens is Muslim folks, right? When we go to the loo, right? We have to be whishing pristine back there. Whishing at all times, you know? <laughs> right so we don't just use toilet paper we use water so we can be you know and we have this ritual ablution called the stinja all right and there's a specific bottle devoted to this purpose called the stinja bottle or stinja jug at home right okay sometimes also in upper class muslim homes they got like a house pipe like that. <laughs> that's very confusing to non-muslims especially if there's a pot plant over there like Mohammed really cares about his plants, hi. <laughs> but basically there's a stinja bottle or jug, right? So basically it's at, that's at home, right? So when you go to hotels, there's no stinja bottle. So you tend to use like what's closest to you. <laughs> it's that little glass.
Have you ever heard this from your family? The glass is too small, bring the kettle! <laughs> Junaid, you clapping like you did that, bro? I'm just joking, man, Lizzie. I'm just joking. No, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm choking, man. That person doesn't seem to be concentrating. You see, the spotlight is moving. Let me just see the... to work on the Zimbabwean border. <laughs> you know, and when you travel overseas also, you realize that South Africa rocks. In what part of the world do Muslims and non-Muslims work together in such harmony? I mean, just think about, like, um, Hashim Amla, Graham Smith. <laughs> Thank you, good to be here. Nelson Mandela, Ahmed Katrada working together for our freedom, right? Jacob Zuma, Shabir Sheikh, etc. It's about <laughs> working together. Muslims, we have a good in South Africa. The rest of the world, we're buggered. We're victims of war, right? But you know, in South Africa, Lizzie, okay, you can even find a halal logo on a hot cross bun. <laughs> Have you seen this at Woolies? A halal hot cross bun? That's hectic. That's like seeing a fizz on Father Christmas or something. Like, ho, 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 Eid Mubarak. Oh, oh. <laughs> Maybe like seeing a long beard on the Easter bunny. Salam alaikum. <laughs> we are well catered for. But sometimes it goes too far, right? Like even though we hate pigs, right? My people hate pigs. There's even a Muslim version of bacon. They call it? Bacon. This is too much. I mean, what's next? We're going to be eating mock? <laughs> Drinking a six pack of mir? <laughs> especially Cape Muslims, they will do all sorts of strange stuff, but none of us will touch pork. Your friend be like, uh, uh, you want a ham sandwich? What? Ugh! I can slam this chai mao! Ga lep gie die daga pijp, my bro. Is maga, is maga! Daga is not allowed, but maga is fine, maga. Some person actually corrected me the other day. He said, nah, hi, hi, hi. They don't call it Maikan because it's Muslim Baikan. They call it Maikan because it's mutton Baikan. You see, the ma is from the mutton and the Aikan is from the Baikan. So it's Maikan. <laughs> I guess it makes sense, but if it's bacon made out of mutton, they could also call it button. It's very confusing on a Cape Flats butchery window. A button's 40 grand a kilo, mesa gaat ga rook wees van aan. Smoking that buttons, no. Overseas is difficult. In France, they won't let people express um, their religious beliefs. They don't let people wear the parda and the scarf. But these French guys, I don't like this. Look at this Muslim woman with this thing over here. Ugh. I don't know whether to make love to you or post a letter. I don't know. <laughs> Even in America, it's hardcore, right? Hardcore. Like, Obama is hardcore. I didn't expect that from Obama. Even Obama shot Osama. One consonant difference, boss. <laughs> Obama shot Osama. <laughs> and then they buried Osama at sea. Remember that? You know? And then they said it was in accordance with Muslim rights. They said, buried him at sea. And they said, in strict accordance with Muslim rights. I'm sorry, I've never ever got a phone call. Your auntie passed away. Meet me at the harbor. <laughs> Bring your inflatable kurta, your waterproof face.
And I actually like America, eh? love America, because I got family from America, because my, my dad was born in India, and then he came to South Africa, had kids here, whishing, right? And his brother, born in India, went to America, had kids there. So I've got first cousins, look very similar to me, but they're proper American. It's weird when you meet them for the first time, you know? They'll be like, Asalaamu Alaikum, my name is Asif, that's Asma, that's Anissa, rock on, man. <laughs> you don't talk like that for real. Do you? <laughs> and you know what happens when you have friends or family from overseas? I don't know if that happened to Miss UK, right? You know what sometimes you do? You teach them certain words or phrases in another language. And you tell them it means something else. <laughs> It's not a nice thing to do, but it's cool to hear an American going, um, so you're telling me that, um, thank you is yo more. <laughs> Did they say that right? Awesome. Yo more. Yo more. Okay. And goodbye is, um, yo masa poas. Did I say that right? <laughs> Did I say it right? It sounds so poetic, like prose. Yo masa poas, it's beautiful. Yo masa poas. <laughs> it's difficult enough when they go to the KFC because they're expecting it to be like Kentucky Fried Chicken, like home, like, hi, welcome to KFC. How may I help you? It's different when they go to KFC on the Cape Flats. Welcome to KFC. Can I take your order, please? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, can, I, can I get a Colonel Burger and some fries and a, a water, please? <laughs> Shereen Kowai. That is a very nice accent to have. Are you from England? <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm from the States. Oh, the States. The free state. You're from Bloomfontein. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm American. Oh, American. Because you look just like my cousin Jerome. Serious? Not just Jerome, no. And if you don't mind me asking, sir, are you, are you colored? Whoa, whoa, hey. We don't use that term, all right? That's offensive. My mom is white, my dad is half white, half African American. We're from a place near the plains of Colorado. Ooh, the plains of Colorado. <laughs> yeah, you look like from the parks of El Dorado. <laughs> but sir, uh, do you mind me asking, um, would you like a mission gravy with that? What? Would you like a missing gravy? <laughs> no, I don't want to mess the gravy. Why would I want to mess the gravy? <laughs> no men miss. <laughs> miss. <laughs> Look, let me say it clear for you. Miss. I spell it, I spell it for you. M-E-S-H, mess. <laughs> mess potatoes, you don't understand. And let me just call my supervisor quick, you know. He used to be big in politics. Julius! <laughs> Obviously not the real Julius. Imagine that you, Julius, was the supervisor at KFC. If this imperialist does not understand the words of this African child, then he must just take. <laughs> A what? Check. Check. Now I have cash or a credit card. <laughs> no checks. <laughs> yo more, yo master poet. That's 
confusing when you travel overseas. Seriously. Ma'am from the UK, what's your name? Just shout it out. Alison. Alison, like when you came here, did you find it difficult to understand the accent? It's very difficult. Just slight, you know, inflections. They are very, very difficult. You know? Because we're very flat. Yes. It's like, yes. Like they go, yes. We flat. Yes. <laughs> They don't understand that, you know. And then you go to Australia and it's like some other weird thing. Like anybody from Australia, yeah? No. But I went to Australia and I learned about this concept of liquids, aerosols, and gels. Right? On the airport, you're not allowed to travel with liquids, aerosols, and gels above a certain amount. Right? In your hand luggage. And the acronym for this is LAGS. L-A-G-S. LAGS. Liquids, aerosols, gels. And the first time I heard this was from an Australian security guard. And confused the heck out of me. Like, hey, on, mate, hey, on. Uh, you, you got any legs, mate? <laughs> yes, I, I do. How many legs you got, mate? I got two. <laughs> Sorry, mate, you're gonna have to leave them here. Come Oscar Pistorius or something. I feel sorry for Oscar, eh? I feel sorry for Oscar, you know? Because we don't know if it's true, you know, if he did it on purpose or by mistake, you know? We don't know, right? Give him the benefit of the doubt, you know? The only thing you know for certain is that in the future when he has a girlfriend, she's probably gonna want to pee with the door open all the time. <laughs> Sorry, Oscar, I couldn't take the chance, hey? Also, it's number two, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Most important thing is your health, hey? Most important thing. <laughs> I actually don't like using these public restrooms, eh? Hey? It's the worst thing to use the public restroom. And I hate the people who steal the locks of the toilet stall doors also. You know, in the public stall doors, they always steal those little locks of the stall doors. You know, and I hate the people who do that because you usually want to relax when you're doing your thing, right? Now there's no locks in the toilet stall doors. You've got to do your business like you're doing Pilates or yoga. <laughs> wait, wait, man, wait. For Muslim people, it's even worse because we got a bottle of water in there. The... <laughs> we get very paranoid when there's no locks in the toilet stall doors. Eh? We all develop chronic bronchitis. You just hear footsteps. You're like, <laughs> Sometimes the uncles, right, they're wearing that full kurtas, right, full kurtas, looking mashallah. They sometimes stick like the top part, like in their pants by mistake. Hey, hey. What? Why are those young girls looking at me? Still got it, still got it. Say my name, Junay. But I always say you must be remain positive about all of these things. Why? Because of the kids. How many parents by round of applause have kids like younger than five or from five below? <laughs> yeah, tired they are. <laughs> so happy to be out of the house. Because <laughs> we do love our children, you know, but they make us stupid. The more time you spend with your kids, the more stupid you become. Your brain capacity decreases. This is a biological fact. You believe this, ma'am? Hey, you don't think so? I'll prove it to you. Parents, grandparents, you ever been watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse? Or Barney the Dinosaur? Or something like that with your kids, right? You're watching it, right? Halfway through, the child gets bored and leaves. The child is gone. And you find yourself still sitting... <laughs> Bonnie, uh, <laughs> all I want to do, all I want to do, you know, is watch CSI, you know. About round of applause, how many people love CSI? Hey, I love CSI. Right, but because I'm tired all day, I fall asleep at night when I want to watch CSI. And because I watch Mickey Mouse Clubhouse all day and I want to watch CSI at night, I dream 
that is a CSI Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. <laughs> it's not cool. You know, Mickey Mouse comes out there, you know, uh, sunglasses, <laughs> suit, ping, jowl there, <laughs> chest there, ping. Ha ha. Donald, it seems like Daisy has died. <laughs> Hey, what's the big idea? <laughs> um, she seems to be covered in an oat-like substance. Let me check. Just like I thought. I'm sorry, but I'd love Mickey to say this. Semen. <laughs> and Goofy's like, semen? But I don't see a boat around here. What are you talking about, Mickey? <laughs> Yuck, oh boy. <laughs> I do apologize for mentioning that, people, but have you watched CSI? Have you watched that program? That's the first thing they find on every single crime scene. Every episode, every week. I think that's why they actually call it CSI. It's collect semen immediately. That's how it is. <laughs> Don't mean to be rude, but it's true. And then you got to take kids to, like, play places, like... We got this place in Cape Town called Busy Bodies. It's like your Bamba Nani. It's an indoor play place. It's called Busy Bodies. This is a true story. And busy Bodies, they got like an indoor jumping castle and um, some jungle gyms and stuff, toys for the kids to play with. And like a little coffee shop on the side so the parents with the young kids can have coffee. But parents with the young kids don't have coffee like you single people. Young single people go to like, uh, you know, Vida E Cafe with your iPads and... <laughs> Espresso abrigado. Yeah. <laughs> Parents of young kids, you don't have coffee like that. We have coffee like refugees. You just sit there. <laughs> Thinking of your lost dreams and so on. The child is on the side. So my kid takes his Buzz Lightyear to Busy Bodies because he needs to take toys to a place with toys, <laughs> right? Uh, obviously, another kid takes his Buzz Lightyear. He's very, very happy about this. Ah. Ah. Kids open their mouth wide and they cry. Ah. They look like that chomp ad. Ah. And they don't, never stop crying immediately, you know? They always take a long time to wind down. They do this thing. <laughs> Especially when I'm upset with you. <laughs> daddy, you're not my daddy anymore. <laughs> we get a new daddy from the daddy shop. <laughs> but the worst cry for me, like, is a silent cry. That's the worst cry for me. You know, because you know the cry I'm talking about. Looks like a cry in every single way, but there's no audio until much later. <laughs> this cry is very difficult to deal with because you as a parent, you think the longer it takes from the start of the cry to the sound actually coming out, the more emotionally damaged the child is getting. <laughs> very difficult to deal with. Like my daughter said, Daddy, can, can, can I have a sweet, please, Daddy? Not now, nah, my baby, it's almost supper. Take the sweet, ah, thank you, daddy. <laughs> they do that to you, eh? Sure, now I'm freak tired. <laughs> but anyways, like the child took my son's Buzz Lightyear, right? And it was fine, but then I had to deal with a Constantia mom, you know? You know, you know the mom, even though she's more in the wrong, she feels the need to give you advice. I'm so sorry, but Sheldon is used to other children sharing with him. We went to this course, parenting course, and we learned this concept called sharing is caring. You should try it. 
Mother Chut! <laughs> you falling, Lizzie? You falling? It's like the Indian yo massa. Uh... <laughs> but I didn't say that. I said, I kept it inside my head. I didn't say that out loud. To make matters worse, she started treating me like a brown man. You know, like we're sitting at adjacent tables and she happens to notice that her handbag is halfway between us. So she does this maneuver. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, you didn't. <laughs> her child just took my child's thing and I'm still the suspect. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a pretty well-known comedian. One day I could be Sir Musa. <laughs> I don't need to steal your handbag. So later on, I took the bag. <laughs> Went outside, made a couple of phone calls. She came out to upset. What the hell you think you're doing? I learned this concept called sharing is caring. Constantial moms get upset, eh? Especially like at the robots. Because there's a lot of begging at the robots. You know? <laughs> you know? And you want to give, it's very good to give, right? But every time you stop, they do. <laughs> Constantial moms get upset because these dudes are persistent, man. They want to. Not, not the white beggars, usually they stand back with a card. <laughs> they believe in passive income, you know, passive. <laughs> The other dudes come up. Mm. All the uh, Constantial moms have the same mood. But you see, you know, she gets upset, you know, lady gets upset. But a lot of times, the Indians have a technique that they use to decrease their stress. It's not a nice thing to do. The best thing I always say is to give. Charity is good. What basically the Indian guys do is um, they leave a big, at the robots, they leave a big space between you and the car in front of you. <laughs> then you wait for the guy to get to your window, like, <laughs> They're gonna use that, they're gonna use that. Gonna use that. <laughs> but kids will also break your stuff, eh? Hey, we, who's got a five-year-old? Kid under the age of five or around five. Oh, there's a five-year-old? How are you doing? Did you break anything of your dad's? Never. Where's your dad? I don't trust you. <laughs> Where's the dad? Yo, bruh. <laughs> is this the dad here? And your kid is over there. Are all these kids yours, bruh? <laughs> yeah, it saves money on stuff in the shop. <laughs> now, my son, my son broke my iPhone. Like, I had waited six months for the iPhone 4. Six months. First day I got it. I don't know how the kid gets it. They just get it. And he busted the screen. And he was the one who was crying. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to take the phone to the service provider, right? Asked the dude, can, can, can you fix the phone? And he made a sound that's never good. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir, the warranty doesn't cover the screen. But what we can do, we can replace the phone. And it'll only cost you 5,000 rand. 
I actually turned into my son. I was like, ah. <laughs> calm down, sir. Calm down. You want a sweet? You want a sweet? We can outsource the repair, but it's a very technical, very complicated process. Shouldn't take too long, though. Maybe about three weeks to a month's time. I just walked out like, you not my service provider anymore. And I sort of thought, screw this, screw this. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to go to the technological leaders in cell phone repair techniques. When do the Pakistanis? <laughs> They're at the Oriental Plaza. <laughs> and these brothers, they have a different concept of time and money. Hey? I asked him, can you fix the phone? Like, of course I can fix it. I'm like, how much is it going to cost? No, too expensive, sir. Too expensive. Too expensive. I do it for 300 Rand. I'm like, what? How long is it going to take? Too long, sir. Too long. Too long. It's a very technical, very complicated process. I have to send it to Mudgal Bai, who's got 17 jobs just like this today alone. You can only get the phone in one hour. Kasim <laughs> he said one hour. I couldn't believe it because they do everything faster that side of the world. You know, cell phones, computers, everything faster. People wonder how they got over a billion people in India. You know, other people, <laughs> we've done the blood tests. You're four weeks pregnant. You should deliver in about eight months' time. Congratulations. In India, we've done the blood tests. You're four weeks pregnant. Push! <laughs> Push! <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Looks just like you. What's his name going to be? Jay Naya. Oh, what a beautiful name. <laughs> Have you heard that name before? Jay Naya. I saw that on the cover of the Natal Mercury oh. Journalist's name was J A Y N A I R, J Naya. That was his actual name. And that's fine for KZN, but in certain parts of the country, <laughs> that's an insult. <laughs> you know, what's your name, J Naya? Why do you say Jason Naya? <laughs> I think generally South Africans, you know, our compliments are insults. I don't know if you noticed that, you know? Our compliments are insults. Like other nationalities, they see a family in the street, they'll go, oh my gosh, is this your baby? Oh my gosh, he's gorgeous. Oh my gosh. What do we say? Is this your baby? Ah, oh, shame, man. <laughs> Sisto. <laughs> I'm sorry, but shame and sis are not compliments. In Cape Town, it's even worse. It's your Shireen, I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. You cock beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry, but cuck beautiful is not a compliment. Your loveliness inspires a bowel movement. <laughs> Should not be taken positively. <laughs> yeah. But kids are amazing. They are amazing. They'll break your stuff. But you can't stop them from playing with these things. Like my kids, three years old, five years old. They're busy on the phones all the time. They can't clean their own backsides, but they're downloading apps. <laughs> Daddy, I'm finished. <laughs> Come clean me, Daddy. Come clean me. Don't you want to download a Stinger app or something? <laughs> I know, but the older folks like complaining about the technology and very often they don't know what they're complaining about. Very often. Like my family is always like, Yari Kanyas, it's a day pisah me die, blueberry, a day. And you're bong, bong, bong. Yelle dag, op die toeter en in die Facebook. I hate the Facebook. And then the great grandmother, she joins in, she's even more confused. I actually like the Facebook. You don't have to paint the house, it's cheaper.
But it's got nothing to do with intelligence, just what you used to. Like my mother's a medical doctor, very intelligent woman, but she's a technophobe. Like I'll be honest with you people, for a long time, she thought the iPad, you know how iPad? Was a high-tech feminine hygiene product. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean like always iPads <laughs> with wings. <laughs> and don't think that can't happen one day. You know, technology, uh, technology is moving very fast. They'll be like, Shiro, why are you taking so long? I'm downloading my period, leave it. <laughs> Nothing at all. Moves very fast. But I'm at a certain age where I like to do the texting and the tweeting, but unlike these young people, I'm sure she's guilty of this, ma'am. Unlike the young people, when I text or tweet, I still feel the need to use full words and sentences when I text. I mean, those young people, they shorten every single word. They pull out vowels. Every word is squashed together. Like every word. Like if I type out full sentences, please meet me at the place on Friday. They do this thing, plus mit mit the plus and frudy. Lol raffle mayo They type like this bad reception on the phone. I'm like, you're the reception is so bad, even my SMS is not coming through. But the social media thing has changed the world, changed the world. Like, you know, the Arab Spring, the Arab Spring was facilitated by Twitter and Facebook. You know, when the Arab youngsters overthrew dictatorial regimes, they utilized Twitter and Facebook. Okay, I don't mean they're like, if you guys don't agree to our demands, <laughs> we'll unfriend you, poke, poke. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean, they mobilized a whole lot of people using Twitter and Facebook. But it must have been very, very difficult for the Arab authorities to understand. Because these young people, they use the shorthand and they did it in Arabic. <laughs> what was that like? I mean, normal Arabic is confusing. What are they texting? What are they texting? What's he saying? He's clearing his throat. I don't know what is going on. There. But young girls will like what they like. They like what they like. They're into twilight, stuff like that. You know what? Some of the uncles got confused. What? Twilight? Maghrib was a long time ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know about twilight, no, Junaid? Twilight. For those of you who don't know, basically, this young girl falls in love with this young guy who just happens to be a vampire. Right? But then she develops, like, doubts because she develops feelings for another young guy who just happens to be a werewolf. <laughs> and they love it. Now, I know it doesn't make sense to you, right? But let me make a little bit more sense of it. It's a white girl. <laughs> I can't imagine that with an Indian girl, you know? The vampire would have to come for a proposal. <laughs> what are your intentions with my daughter? You're very pale, my friend. Very pale. And you got diamonds in your skin. What are you, memon or something? Uh, Memon Indian. <laughs> I think you could have Memon Indian vampires. You could, you know. Because already they suck you dry, already. <laughs> but guys, thanks for coming to the show. This is awesome. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Um, and please look out for uh, my next film. The Long Walk to Freedom, the only authorized movie based on Madiba's autobiography. And in the movie, I play Ahmed Kathrada, who's one of the stalwarts of the struggle, right? And it's moral, but thank you, thank you. And he spent many years in prison with Madiba, 26 years in total. Madiba spent 27, but he spent 26. I don't know why. For some reason, Indians always get a discount. <laughs> But I told my parents I was going to be in a long walk to freedom, and they got so excited, they didn't even think straight. It was weird. I was like, Mom, Dad, I'm going to be in a long walk to freedom. Mom's like, oh, are you going to play Mandela? Are you going to play Mandela? <laughs> I don't think she thought that one through. She thought I was going to walk out there looking just like this. I have fought against white domination. And I have fought against black domination. And that is why I have decided to be Indian.
Thank you so much for coming to the show. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.